Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 formulas that you need to master in order to become an Excel pro. Let's take a look. In this first formula, we're gonna see how we can easily extract text before a given delimiter. So in this example here, we have a product code and the first part of the product code before the first dash gives us our category for the product. And in this example, we want to extract that category code. And we can easily do that with the text before function. So let's try that out. So with the text before function, we just need to give it the text that we want to extract from, and then the delimiter that we want to extract based on. So in this case, it's going to be a dash. And then I can press enter and I'm gonna get that product code by itself. And here in this case, I'm gonna press F2 and extend this range of product codes to include all the product codes and press enter. And we get all of the product codes separated now. The next formula we're gonna take a look at, we're gonna see how we can look up values from another data set. So in this example, we're going to return a customer name based on their customer ID from this table here. And to do that, we're going to use the XLOOKUP function. So this is going to allow us to look for a value and return a corresponding value from the data set. So the first argument of our XLOOKUP function is the value that we want to look for. So that's going to be our customer ID. And then the next argument is the array of values that we're going to look in. So that's gonna be our column of customer IDs. And then the last argument that we're going to use is going to be the array of values that we wanna return. And that's going to be the customer name for us. And when we press enter, we get the correct customer name based on the customer ID that we looked for. Now XLOOKUP can return multiple values from the same record. So if I press F2, we can extend the return array to include all of the data. And when we press enter, then XLOOKUP is going to return all of that information for that customer. So we get the name, city, state, country, and zip code based on the customer ID. The next formula we're going to take a look at is going to allow us to return multiple records based on a lookup value. So in the previous formula, we used XLOOKUP to return a single record based on the customer ID. But in this example, we're going to return multiple records based on the customer ID. So in this example, we've got a list of customer orders and each customer could have more than one order. And we wanna return all of the orders for a given customer. And to do that, we're gonna use the filter function. So the filter function, takes an array of data that we want to filter. So that's going to be all of our data for our orders here. And then the next argument is the criteria that we want to filter based on. So for us, that's going to be filtering based on the customer ID column here. And we only want to return results when this is equal to our given customer ID that we've selected up here. And when we press enter, we get all of the orders for that customer. Now, when the customer doesn't have any orders, we get this calc error, but the filter function is going to allow us to choose a value that we can show instead of this calc error. So let's press F2 and add in our optional if empty argument. And here we can return the text value, no orders. And then instead of a calc error, whenever we have no orders for a given customer, we're gonna get that shown as a value. The next formula we're gonna take a look at is for joining text with delimiters. So in this example, we're going to join an address so that it's all in one cell with commas to separate each component of our address. And to do this, we're gonna use the text join function. So this is going to allow us to specify a delimiter to join our text with. So the first argument of text join is the delimiter that we want to join our values based on. 
So here we're gonna use a comma and a space character to separate our address. Then the next argument allows us to ignore empty cells or include them. In this case, we're gonna use true. And that way, if our address has empty cells, it's going to be excluded from the join values. And the last argument is the text that we wanna join. So for us, that's going to be our city, state, country, and zip code. And when we press enter, we get our address separated with commas in one cell. And we can copy and paste this down and get the same result for all of our customers here. The next formula we're gonna take a look at is going to allow us to split values based on a delimiter. So this is the opposite scenario that we just saw. And here we're starting with an address that is separated with commas. And we wanna separate each component of the address into a separate cell. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the text split function And the text split function allows us to split text based on a delimited value. So the first argument is the text that we wanna split. And then the next argument is the value that we wanna split based on. So for us, that's gonna be a comma followed by a space. And when we press enter, we get our address components in separate cells. So here we have the city, state, country, and zip code all in separate cells and we can copy and paste this down and get the same results for all of our addresses. The next formula we're gonna take a look at is going to allow us to list all of the dates in a given month and year. So based on a single date value, we're gonna get a sequence of dates in that month, starting at the first of the month and then going all the way down to the end of the month value. So in this formula, we're gonna use a let function as we have some intermediate calculations that we wanna reuse. So the first part of our let function, we're defining the date, and this comes from the value in cell C3 in this example. Next, we're going to extract the year from our date value in cell C3, and we're also going to extract the month from our date value. Next, we're going to create a sequence of numbers from one up until our end of the month day. And then based on this sequence, we're going to construct a sequence of dates using the date function. And so here we're gonna use the year value and the month value from our given date. And then this is going to return our sequence of dates. Now this is going to be dynamic. So here in February, 2024, this is a leap year and you can see that we get that leap year date. Let's check out 2023. And in this case, it's not a leap year and we get our last date in February as the 28th. In the next formula, we're going to get all of the end of the month dates from a given year. And again, we're gonna use the let function so that we can define calculations and reuse them for our results. So the first thing we're gonna do in our let function is define the year value from cell C3. Next, based on this sequence from one to 12, we're going to create a sequence of dates for the first of the month or the start of the month. So for this, we're gonna use the date function with our year and our sequence of month numbers, one through 12. And then for the day, this is just going to be always one so that we get the start of the month. Next, we're going to take that sequence of starting dates or first of the months for each of the months and use it to return the end of the month date value with the end of month function. And this is what we're going to return from our let function. So the result is we get a series of 12 dates and each of those 12 dates are the end of the month for each of the months. And so you can see 2023 is not a leap year and the end of the month here that we get for February is the 28th. If we try 2024, that's a leap year 
and the end of the month for February that we get is the 29th. The next formula we're going to take a look at is going to allow us to get the top n items from a data set. So in order to do this, we're first going to sort our data set. So we're going to use the sort function and the sort function allows us to take an array of data and then sort it based on an index number representing the column we want to sort on. So in this example, we want to get the top n items based on revenue. So we want to sort based on the revenue column. And in this data set, that is the sixth column. And then the next argument allows us to sort either in ascending order or descending order. In this case, we want to sort in descending order so that we get our top items at the top of our sorted results. And now that we've got our data sorted based on revenue, we can take the top number of items from this data set to get our top n items. And to do that, we're going to use the take function. And this just allows us to take a given number of rows from the top of a data set. So here we can take the top seven items and that's going to give us the top seven items based on revenue for our data set. And we can of course change this. So this could be top five items or top three items, etc. The next formula we're going to take a look at is going to allow us to summarize any data set. So here we've got a data set of customer orders and we can use the group by function to summarize this based on the category field and the revenue field. So here we're going to group our categories together and then we're going to summarize the revenue field. And then the next argument is how we want to summarize our values. So we can select any number of functions such as summing those values or taking the average or counting them. In this example, let's sum our revenue. And when we press enter, we get a summarized table that shows our total revenue for each category. Now the group by function can also summarize text data. So let's take a look at that. Again, we're going to group our category field. And this time for our value field, instead of the revenue, we're going to use the product field as our values that we want to summarize. And for the function, how we want to summarize those values, the only one that's going to make sense for text values is going to be either the concat function or the array to text function. Now the array to text function is going to be the preferred one as this is going to concatenate our product values and separate them by commas. So when we press enter here, we get a summarized table and for each of our categories, we have a comma separated list of all the products that were sold within that category. The last formula we're going to take a look at is going to allow us to extract any email addresses from text. So in this example, we've got some text that includes email addresses, but unfortunately there's no pattern to where these email addresses appear. So in order to extract only the email addresses, we're going to use the regex extract function. And this is going to allow us to match email addresses with a regex pattern. So here our regex pattern looks for an email address and the components of this regex pattern at the start here, we're looking to match our email ID. So this is the first part of our email address before the at symbol. Then we're going to match an at symbol as every email address needs one. And then the next part here, is going to match a domain. And then we need a period in our email address. And then after that, we have a top level domain that needs to be at least two characters and at most five characters. So we can use this regex pattern with our regex extract function, and it's going to extract all of the email addresses for us. Let's check it out. 
So the regex extract function takes the text that we want to extract from and the pattern that we want to use to extract values based on. So here it's going to be looking for and matching our email pattern. And then we've got a return mode. So this is going to allow us to either return the first match or all matches. In this case, we might have multiple emails in our text that we want to extract. So we're going to use that. And when we press enter, we get only the email address from our text. And here we're just going to edit this and turn our pattern reference into an absolute reference. And then we can copy and paste this down. And now we can extract all of the emails from our text. So there you go, 10 essential Excel formulas you need to master in order to become an Excel pro. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.